Hello everyone, I have been working on correcting the various science claims in the videos produced by various Dawa clowns. There is a new video of nearly two hours duration uploaded which shows the chief peddler of science falsehoods, Subor Ahmed, in conversation with Muhammad Ali who goes by the name of the Muslim Lantern. I will analyse the science claims and respond. This will be in several parts. Information that is being put forward as evidence, quote unquote, for evolution. It is the same recycled evidence that they've been recycling for years and years and years, even though they have been refuted. So already I'm getting the impression there's going to be a lot of rubbish nonsense in this video, judging by that opening statement. They both have to demonstrate that they have kept up to date in order to make such a claim. We've seen time and time again that these Darwinists have been hoodwinking people, have been putting together speculative things, have been lying through a mission. So time and time again, these things have come up. And the general perception of anybody who looks into the field like myself or you is that these people are simply not trustworthy. We just simply cannot, we cannot accept what they're saying based upon their past behavior. Let's see who genuinely is trustworthy here by looking at the scientific data. What is a fact? Generally, when someone says something is a fact, they say that there is no doubt in that thing. There is no doubt in it. We agree on it. In science, a fact is objectively verifiable data. Evolution is a fact. We can objectively verify the change in heritable characteristics of biological populations over successive generations. That is what evolution is. For a more thorough schooling of Sabor on this basic use of terminology, please watch the video Evolution is Absolutely a Fact by Aaron Ra. I will link it in the description. This is what people uh, in the Darwinian field will present to you as evidence. Okay. Let's go on to the first thing, inshallah. Okay, so the important thing is this. Darwin, when he put his theory in chapter 6 of his book, obviously here, Origin of Species, chapter 6, Difficulties in the Theory, right? Already, this doesn't look very good for him. He starts off by quoting Darwin from On the Origin of Species. There were six editions of On the Origin of Species from 1859 to 1872. Evolutionary theory has greatly advanced in the over 150 years since the last publication of this book. The other book that he's highlighting on his slide, The Panda's Thumb by Stephen Jay Gould, was published in 1980 which is 43 years ago. We therefore don't need to listen to these two quoting Darwin. Whenever we get, you see here is different levels here. Obviously you've got the Cambrian, etc. All of these are different levels in, in the soil. And because it was a gradual process, then when we go in the first one, we will see the latest creatures that have evolved. When you go deeper and deeper and deeper, you'll find now less evolved creatures, the more you, be, you go deep. So this is what the theory is. This is a general understanding of how the fossil record works right? amount to the claim that you guys may make there is innumerable amount of transitional forms and creatures we need to find them they have to be when we be, when we finding all of these creatures we need to be finding all of these fossils that lead us for a fact the evolution took place why are we not finding them as your sources are well out of date that's the reason why you're not finding these transitional fossils this much more recent paper from 2019 demonstrates that the Cambrian explosion, which lasted at least 25 million years, showed fossil evidence of a rapid increase in animal diversity and that the fossil record also extended into the Ediacaran period, which is the period before the Cambrian explosion. In the Ediacaran period, organisms were soft-bodied, which makes it harder to fossilize. Despite this, there are plenty of fossils from this period. Here are some examples. This abundance of fossils continued into the Cambrian period. While we will never have a complete fossil record, there certainly are not any missing transitional forms and paleontologists are able to build up a picture of the diversification of life over time through the fossil record. And we've got something called the Cambrian explosion. We found so many fossils from that period. And all of these fossils, they do not support the idea of gradualism, uh, gradualism and that creatures took all of this time to evolve on this and that. 
the Cambrian explosion lasted about 25 million years, but this was within a series of events lasting about 70 million years. This is plenty of time for biological organisms to evolve. We found all of these creatures. So we find this, this trilobite is an example that we found from the Cambrian period, right? This is a very advanced creature with multiple different eyes and mm. it has nothing to do with the idea that this gradually evolved and took a, or this very, very, very long... We shouldn't be finding it in the Cambrian period. Trilobites first appeared in the fossil record in the early Cambrian period, about 521 million years ago. The fossil record shows high diversification, but there is evidence linking the evolution back to the genus Parvancorina from the earlier Ediacaran period. This would explain their appearance in the Cambrian period. This next section is a long assertion that this rapid change in speciation during the Cambrian explosion is evidence against evolution. To demonstrate that this is not the case, I will introduce the model of punctuated gradualism. This explains how the rate of evolution can vary according to environmental factors with rapid changes occurring when there is a rapid change in the environment. The second thing is how. How would an animal or a thing evolve very quickly, suddenly, by itself, by random, random processes? How does that happen? So yeah. you were given the excuse. This is a big issue now, right? Because they were given the excuse of natural selection. This happens a long period of time based on the environment and this and that. So how can you account for this very sudden, perfect uh, evol evolution, if you want to use that term, that happens at a, sudden, at, a, at, a, at a certain time suddenly. There was nothing sudden or perfect about it. He has just demonstrated he has zero understanding of the Cambrian explosion as it took place over at least 25 million years. This is plenty of time for natural selection to work. His statement here is just his personal incredulity and a lack of understanding. How can you account for that? How can you explain that? And what we would say is it's impossible to explain. For example, animals like giraffes, right? What they said is that they didn't have that long neck. They were trying to eat from the trees. So they were extending their neck, extending, extending, extending. And through a gradual process, their neck started like stretching. You know how ridiculous these things happen when you start to actually listen to their claims, right? And then it started to stretch, the stretch, stretch, until it started reaching the, the leaves and started eating from the food. Now, why is the problem there? Is if we assume sudden evolution, are you trying to say to me that the blood vessels, the bones, tissues, the heart, everything related to, bl to blood evolved suddenly all together in the perfect manner that the giraffe is not going to die? So he has taken a seismic leap from the Cambrian explosion to demonstrate a hilarious misunderstanding of giraffes. Rapid evolution is not overnight. It's evolution occurring at a faster rate. The evolution of a giraffe's neck is well understood with fossils over the last 16 million years. Let alone now to go to speak about the, the breathing system of the giraffe and all of these things. If there is a sudden evolution that took place, how can that happen that all of these organs and everything in the body changes in the perfect way, in the perfect time for, the, for that creature to survive. At this rate, I'm thinking a school child could correct these two clowns. All organ systems evolve together. There is not a sudden change that happens overnight. There is plenty of time for natural selection to work. So what we said here in the Cambridge explosion is that they did not found those species. With the testimony of someone like Darwin and other people, they did not found those transitions. The transitional species from the Ediacaran period to the Cambrian period have been found. See earlier in this video. Again, he quotes Darwin, totally ignoring more recent research. Right. We would say, okay, the, then you've got all of these different fossils. Okay, that makes sense. Okay, now we will look into what you guys are saying. Okay. But they don't have it. So what did they, what did they do? If we don't have something, what do we do? Like the Christians do. You know, some, some Christians. You know, <laughs> they make it up. It's the same idea with science. We don't have evidence for this idea. What we will do is that we will make up evidence for this idea. So this is a rather outrageous claim that evidence is made up by scientists to support a theory because the evidence cannot be found. Let's see if they can back up this claim. So let's go, go on to look at some of the links in what I would call, right, clear-cut forgeries with their own 
uh, testimony. And I want to say something very important. Look, I'm, all the magazines that I'm going to put forward here are magazines that actually support evolution. Before I'd even looked at any of these links, it's clear this guy is clueless. He says, all these magazines support evolution. One of them is called Answers Research Journal. This is produced by Answers in Genesis and starts off with the assumption that the Bible is true and therefore evolution must be false. Another of his list of journals is Evolution News. This is produced by the Discovery Institute, which supports intelligent design creationism, which is not science and is contradicted by evolution. I'm not going to bring you creationists, quote unquote. I'm not going to bring you books of people who already deny evolution. I'm going to bring you their own testimonies about their own things. So this is the first forgery here. Okay. Okay. This fossil that was announced as the, as the missing link, as possible evidence, is what is a forgery. Okay. That's the first link. Let's go on to the next link. I thought he would go into each link in detail, but no, he just wants to gloss over each one to give the impression that scientists are trying to mislead people. Let's actually look at the link he just showed. This was a forgery, but it was scientists who determined that it was a forgery and thus disregarded it. Many true examples of feathered dinosaurs have been found, and we now have a much better understanding of the evolution of birds. Bell Down Man, infamous fake fossil, okay? And all of these things that they talk about here, they were using as evidences. If you open the, the scientific textbooks, you will find these things, to, uh, quote unquote, claim to be evidences for evolution. This just gets worse for him. I do not know whether he is just deceived or whether he is a total liar, but what he says is completely wrong. Piltdown Man was another hoax, but it was scientists again who identified the forgery and thus discarded it. No scientific textbook uses Piltdown Man as evidence of evolution, as everybody knows it is a fake. The only learning point from Piltdown Man is to continue questioning, as this leads to a better scientific understanding. Baboon found in famous Lucy skeleton, right? If anyone knows about the, 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 the Lucy skeleton, we're going to talk about it in depth as well. Baboon founds are found in it. Baboon, sorry, baboon bones are found in it, right? A baboon bone was found amongst Lucy's skeleton. This was only identified through scientific analysis and through challenging assumptions. This strengthens the case for evolution and highlights the importance of Lucy's skeleton. There was no evidence that there was an attempt to mislead the general public. I will link this article in the description. What those people do, when we find their mistakes, they try to even justify it for, uh, in a different way. Like, for example, look, you say, apparently not a man or ape. But you're claiming it is a man and ape, I mean, this, it is a missing link and all of that. He had to go back to 1927 to find another case that supports his contention. This is the case of Nebraska man where a tooth was thought to be from an ape but later identified as belonging to an extinct species of a pig-like hoofed mammal. This was not a deliberate hoax and showed the importance of continually re-evaluating the evidence. Again, there was no deception and scientists discovered the mistake and corrected it. If you talk to him about Hickel's drawing, all he's going to say to you, oh, this is a long time ago, this few yeah. data, this, that's what they say. But these are used in, in, in medical textbooks. Yeah. Until, yeah. until 2013. This link I have, it's showing you how many textbooks it is used in, up to 2013. Yeah. Even though this idea was refuted in 1909. So, you know, Darwin's time, you know. With regard to Heckel's embryology drawings, he was accused of exaggerating similarities in the appearance of an early embryo to support his recapitulation theory. The drawings show up in modern textbook as historical pieces. We have micrographs to show the real appearance and there is not a great dissimilarity. The, uh, the other idea that we had of the human tail Right? Say humans are born with tails, and you know, these tails used to be uh, from uh, apes and from all of these different types of animals. And in the end, it is a disease called lipoma, and there is many different names for that specifically. It's a, a skin disease where you have an extra part of the skin coming out. Human embryos have tails that disappear at about eight weeks. This is a 
six-week-old fetus. In very rare cases, the tail persists. This is called an atavism. This is definitely not a lipoma. A lipoma is a benign tumour of fat which is under the skin and not part of it. Right. Yep. So what is it that I'm trying to show here? Is when they do not have evidence for something, because they worship this thing as a religion, that's why I compare them with Christianity, they worship it to be a religion. And their idea and their understanding, this is like a, a religion. So if I don't have evidence for something that I already believe in, then I will make up evidence to support what I, what I, what I believe in. I think we can all see who is the dishonest one who is making things up. He then moves on to his next point without addressing the other references that he has listed in his slide that suggests made up fossils. In the interests of completeness, I will look at all the references listed here that have not already been discussed. Next on the list is reference three, which is from the Answers Research Journal mentioned earlier. The article talks about Java Man. It portrays Java Man as questionable evidence of human evolution from earlier hominids, though it does admit that Java Man is now widely classified as Homo erectus. Homo erectus is widely considered to be the ancestor to modern humans, so Java Man is good evidence for the evolution of modern humans from earlier hominids. Creationists like to deny any human evolution, instead favouring a divine creation of Homo sapiens. We have addressed the Lucy skeleton. Next on his list is reference 5, which is about the fossil Ida of the genus Darwinius. The article questioned whether Ida was a relative of the branch of primates from which humans evolved, or an ancestor of lemurs. Ultimately, the final place of Ida on the evolutionary tree does not detract from the fact that evolution occurred. In both of these last two cases, genuine fossils were found. The debate is where the fossil is placed in evolutionary history. There is no suggestion that fossils are made up, as he is suggesting, or that their importance and place in evolutionary history is overstated. Number six on the list refers to scientists debating the classification of Artipithecus ramidus. More recently, its characteristics suggest its place as an ancestor of modern humans. Again, the fossils were not made up. Number seven on the list is an article in Nature which suggests that Archaeopteryx was not the first bird. It is still considered the first bird, though there is a gradual transition between theropod dinosaurs and modern birds. Again, the fossils were not made up. Number eight on the list discusses coelacanths. There is no mention of fossils being made up anywhere. Number nine on the list refers to tetrapod trackways. There is no mention of fossils being made up anywhere. Number 10 on the list has already been discussed as Nebraska Man. Number 11 on the list is a broken link from which no further information can be determined. Number 12 on the list has already been addressed when discussing the embryology drawings. Number 13 on the list discusses human tails. There is no mention of a lipoma or of any fossil anywhere. So in summary here, the only fossils made up were by hoaxes, and these hoaxes were discovered and discarded by the scientific community. The other links do not discuss any made-up fossils, just debate about where the fossils fit in evolutionary history. There is no evidence that scientists are making up fossils to push an evolutionary agenda. It is obvious that Sabor and the Muslim Lantern are either completely ignorant or deliberately deceptive. I will end this part and resume my analysis of the rest of the video later. Thank you.